time-twisted tales, classic cartoons, and comic book heroes. What could possibly go wrong? Turns out, a lot. Even the most die-hard Terminator fans would probably argue that the franchise is inconsistent. The first two films in the series are almost universally beloved. After that, things got convoluted. When your series sets the date for the end of the world in 1997, any Terminator movies made after that point tend to tie themselves in knots to explain why we're all still kicking. Enter Terminator Dark Fate, a 2019 sequel that was supposed to right the ship. James Cameron, who directed the first two movies and returned to produce this sequel, told Deadline that he had such confidence in the film that he felt it could launch a whole new trilogy, saying, When we got a handle on something, we looked at it as a three-film arc, so there is a greater story there to be told. If we get fortunate enough to make some money with Dark Fate, we know exactly where we can go with the subsequent films. The film also saw the return of Linda Hamilton as the iconic Sarah Connor after almost 30 years away from the franchise. Fans, understandably, were excited. But despite decent reviews, Dark Fate was not successful enough to reignite the series. According to Deadline, the film's opening weekend box office fell short of expectations, drawing only $29 million. International audiences weren't much more responsive, and despite earning $261 million worldwide, the movie would have had to reach $450 million just to break even, according to Variety. Sci-fi fans had a lot of reasons to look forward to Luke Besson's Valerian and the City of a Thousand Planets. After all, Besson is responsible for the cult classic sci-fi film The Fifth Element, and Valerian represented his return to the genre. An adaptation of the long-running Franco-Belgian comic Valerian and Laureline, the film was teased at San Diego Comic-Con more than a year before its 2017 release. It also marked Rihanna's return to the big screen, playing a shape-shifting alien named Bubble. Unfortunately, not even the power of Rihanna could make Valerian a hit. Marred by middling reviews, many of which pointed to Cara Delevingne as a particular weakness, the film flopped at the box office, leaving audiences thinking one thing. Look, that was really cool, but not exactly what I'm looking for right now. However, the stars were forced to continue on the film's press tour, already knowing the film had bombed. Against a $180 million budget, Newsweek noted that the sci-fi epic had to make $400 million to be profitable. It debuted with a mere $23 million worldwide gross, eventually topping out at only $226 million. Disney has had some luck turning their theme park attractions into films. The Pirates of the Caribbean series is one of the highest grossing movie franchises of all time. Other times, they weren't so lucky. It makes sense that Disney was excited about 2015's Tomorrowland, a film that attempted to create a mythology for the section of the parks that goes by the same name, directed by Brad Bird, who helmed The Incredibles and The Iron Giant, and starring George Clooney. It seemed like a fun recipe for success. Please tell me you can do better than fun. The film received an aggressive marketing push from the Mouse House, extensively advertising Tomorrowland with a six-minute extended peek at the film, which premiered in IMAX screenings of Avengers Age of Ultron. Audiences reacted positively. At first, Despite the hype, mainstream audiences simply didn't show up for Tomorrowland in theaters. Reviews were lukewarm, and the film failed to capture the same buzz as Pirates of the Caribbean. According to The Hollywood Reporter, the film cost $190 million to produce, not counting advertising costs, but by several months after its release, it had barely crawled past $200 million globally. All told, the movie lost Disney somewhere north of $150 million. The blockbuster of tomorrow, it wasn't. The announcement that Ava DuVernay would be adapting Madeleine Langle's beloved children's book, A Wrinkle in Time, brought much attention to the project. According to Vanity Fair, DuVernay's selection was historic. No black woman had ever directed a film with a budget over $100 million, so DuVernay would be the first. In building the film, DuVernay insisted on a diverse cast that included Reese Witherspoon and Oprah Winfrey, a move that sent anticipation levels skyrocketing. A cover story in Time praised the film's diversity. Even the American Library Association got in on the hype, reporting, Librarians haven't seen this kind of advanced attention for a kid-lit adaptation since the last Harry Potter movie. No pressure or anything. The movie was finally released in 2018, and it bombed. Despite everything the movie had going for it, audiences simply didn't turn up. Perhaps scared off by less than stellar reviews, Deadline called it one of the biggest box office bombs of 2018, 
noting that the film represented a loss of more than $130 million for Disney. No further films in the series have been planned. Advertising for 2018 Cities on Wheels epic Mortal Engines pushed hard on the fact that Peter Jackson was involved. And like Jackson's previous Lord of the Rings work, Mortal Engines is a big screen adaptation of a beloved book series. Nearly a year before the movie's release, book publisher Scholastic got the promotional engines rolling. Publishers Weekly reported that the company was planning new covers for the series, as well as a new volume of short stories set in the film's post-apocalyptic landscape. The film was even given a prime release date in December 2018, suggesting that this was an event film not to be missed. People missed it. The book series may have had its fans, but the film version of Mortal Engines didn't come close to matching Jackson's earlier box office dominance. Deadline reported the production budget at $110 million, and further advertising spent more than $120 million. According to Vanity Fair, it made a mere $7.5 million in its opening weekend. Worldwide, it reached just under $84 million. When Solo, a Star Wars story was announced, sci-fi fans were excited to see a prequel centered on wisecracking ruffian Han Solo. The trades and various film sites breathlessly followed casting announcements to see who would play the younger version of the character made famous by Harrison Ford. Ultimately, the lead role went to Hail Caesar breakout Alden Ehrenreich. The hype for the movie began to falter when creative difficulties on set were made public. Directors Phil Lord and Chris Miller were fired and replaced by Ron Howard, according to Variety, who noted that there were just weeks left of shooting when Howard stepped in to finish the film. When Solo finally hit theaters in 2018, reviews were decent. The movie sits at 69% fresh on Rotten Tomatoes. However, six months after The Last Jedi evoked vocal backlash from some Star Wars fans, audiences just didn't seem to care anymore. Box Office Mojo estimated that the film's budget had ballooned to $275 million, but Solo only crawled to $213 million domestically, before hitting $393 million internationally. Still, it was far from the haul that would have been necessary to turn a profit. After the Wachowskis changed the action movie game with 1999's The Matrix, all of Hollywood wanted to know what they'd do next. Initially, the answer was two more Matrix movies, successively less well-received than the first. After that, they announced that they were turning their attention to a live-action adaptation of the iconic cartoon Speed Racer, about a guy who wants to become the world's best race car driver, and some other stuff. More than a year before the movie's 2008 release, producer Joel Silver got the hype train rolling and told Empire Magazine that the film would be unlike anything in the history of cinema. The film was set to star John Goodman, Susan Sarandon, Christina Ricci, and Emil Hirsch. Sarandon went into more detail about just what was so revolutionary about the Wachowskis' approach, telling Collider that they had developed a new technique for keeping both the foreground and background in focus. Teasing, everything is very, very saturated with some new kind of film, so it's every color that wasn't in The Matrix is seriously in this film. The movie received a 41% fresh rating by critics on Rotten Tomatoes, and audiences weren't too interested either. According to Bomb Report, the movie made under $44 million domestically, against a budget of $120 million, and at $94 million internationally, the movie didn't even break even with its production budget. In 2012, the Wachowskis teamed with German director Tom Tickwer to adapt David Mitchell's critically acclaimed, time-spanning novel, Cloud Atlas. To craft the uncategorizable film, the directors assembled an all-star cast that included Tom Hanks, Halle Berry, Hugh Grant, Duna Bay, Ben Wishaw, and more, enlisting their actors to take on multiple roles across each story. Before the movie's release, Warner Brothers president of domestic distribution Dan Fellman hyped the film up while speaking with The Hollywood Reporter, saying, Audiences who have seen an early screening of Cloud Atlas have been elated by its powerful and inspiring story as well as its breathtaking visuals. The corresponding article even noted that the film might be an awards player. Entertainment sites rushed to help viewers decode the film's multiple and mesh storylines and repeat cast members, positioning the movie as an event. Then, Cloud Atlas was actually released, and it failed to connect. E! News reports that the sci-fi epic cost $100 million to make, but in its opening weekend, it only managed to scrounge up $9.6 million. 
According to Box Office Mojo, the movie topped out at $27 million domestically, eventually reaching $130 million worldwide. Titan AE is about a far future scenario where Earth is destroyed by aliens and humanity's remnants live aboard a spaceship. It took several years to actually reach theaters once production began. Along the way, it underwent numerous changes, including a title change from its original name, Planet Ice. Production was also taken over by beloved animator Don Bluth, fresh from the success of Anastasia. Audiences were excited about the director's leap into sci-fi and CGI. However, ahead of the film's release, co-director Gary Goldman seemed to already be hedging expectations. In an interview with Animation World News, he stated, We had only 19 months to complete the whole thing. People who have seen the picture, even the color timer at Disney, have said that they can't believe that it was done in such a short time. When it was finally released, Titan AE lost the studio a ton of money. According to Box Office Mojo, the space epic made a disappointing $9.4 million in its opening weekend against a production budget of $75 million. Ultimately, it only made about $37 million worldwide. That's such a loss that it led to the closure of Fox's entire animation studio in 2000, according to Variety. Perhaps underselling it a bit, president of Fox Animation Chris Melodondri told the outlet, it clearly is a tough marketplace. In the years after Fantastic Four, Rise of the Silver Surfer, the Marvel Cinematic Universe launched and dominated the box office. By the time 20th Century Fox rebooted the property in 2015, fans were eager for a new take on the characters. The film was directed by Chronicle Helmer Josh Trank, who cast Michael B. Jordan, Miles Teller, Kate Mara, and Jamie Bell as the super-powered team. In addition to tapping Toby Kevill to play the villainous Doctor Doom, the hype was high. News of extensive reshoots killed some of the momentum. Years later, Trank would describe the studio-mandated process to Polygon as akin to being castrated. Recalling, you're standing there, and you're basically watching producers blocking out scenes five minutes ahead of when you get there, having editors hired by the studio deciding the sequence of shots that are going to construct whatever is going on. He decided to kneecap his own film, tweeting and deleting the night before release. A year ago, I had a fantastic version of this, and it would have received great reviews. You'll probably never see it. Predictably, the film failed to find its audience. Critics weren't kind either. Unlike the hypothetical version of the film Trank claimed to have delivered, the actual movie currently sits at a disappointing 9% fresh rating on Rotten Tomatoes. According to The Hollywood Reporter, the movie lost upwards of $100 million. It's fantastic. The sequel to a cult classic 1980s film where Jeff Bridges gets stuck inside a video game. Tron Legacy promised updated visuals that would reflect the staggering advancements that have been made in the field of CGI. Though the film wouldn't hit theaters for 16 months, Disney brought Flynn's Arcade to life at San Diego Comic-Con 2009, ensuring that anticipation for the new film would have plenty of time to build among the target audience. Star Olivia Wilde began her press tour that same summer, more than a year in advance, telling Wired, This is a revolution in filmmaking, and I have to be a part of it. Computer Graphics World even hyped it up as the successor to the previous year's Avatar, but despite everything Tron Legacy had going for it, the film failed to turn a profit. All that digital de-aging technology used to make Bridges young again didn't come cheap. According to the numbers, the movie cost $200 million to make and only took in $44 million in its opening weekend. Plans for a sequel were put on hold. But in 2023, Disney finally announced that a third film called Tron Ares was in development. In 1982, Ridley Scott's Blade Runner failed to light up the box office, thanks in part to Steven Spielberg's E.T. The Extraterrestrial still dominating theaters. The film, which starred Harrison Ford, was a gritty neo-noir about a bounty hunter chasing after synthetic humans. But the story simply didn't resonate in the era where charming aliens had appetites for Reese's Pieces. However, the movie became a bit of a home video marvel, rescuing the film from obscurity. The 2017 installment, titled Blade Runner 2049, would pair returning star Ford with a young upstart in the form of a consciously optimistic Ryan Gosling, who told GQ, I've never done something so shrouded in secrecy, or where there's so much anticipation. Early reviews were rapturous, sending anticipation into overdrive. Blade Runner 2049 won the weekend box office when it finally hit theaters, but the movie didn't come close to expectations. 
According to Entertainment Weekly, the film had been forecast to make as much as $55 million on opening, but it pulled in $31.5 million instead. The film's box office haul was so disappointing that it led to layoffs at Alcon Entertainment, according to The Hollywood Reporter.